Hey everybody, it's your boy Matt, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do, and hit the like button and sm- Alright, so today we're going to be um, remaking our squash logic as an ability that we can apply to the self. Um, this isn't going to be something that we give to, to a character that they apply to an enemy. This will just be an ability that sits there, ready to be used, and then when it happens, we apply it to the self. We'll, we'll squash using a gameplay ability. It'll make sense. I'll show it to you. So here we go. Okay, we're in our Hopper Blueprint Function Library, and I just want to show this logic again. This is uh, this is unchanged from the squash video previously, and um, right above the Apply Punch Force to Character, it's just another function, a static function, Blueprint Pure, because we don't need to uh, execute it at all. And we're sending in uh, Velocity, and a Velocity to Kill, which by default is zero. And if we go check out what we're doing in here, we're doing an if statement. So we're checking, first of all, if it's normalized, because we want to normalize the velocity first. Um, and if it is, we're just taking the Z value off of it. And if it isn't, we're getting the safe normal, and then the Z off of it. And then we're checking if it's greater than our velocity to kill. And uh, currently our velocity to kill is just zero. So it, if we're falling on the bad guy with any Z-force, we're going to return true. If not, we return false. All right, so we're in the editor. There's a couple things that we need to make so that this works. First of all, we're going to go to our hopper enemy. Go ahead and open that up. And we're going to build our squash logic. So first, we're going to make a custom event. And this will be called squash sprite. We want to make this a multicast and reliable. What we're going to do is grab our sprite, set relative scale 3D, pass into that. We're going to get the relative scale 3D as it is currently, and then we're going to divide. We're going to divide by one in the X, one in the Y, and then two in the Z. So we squash our sprite by half downwards. Next we actually need to set the relative location because when we squash it downwards it's just doing it towards the middle so we'll be floating in the air and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is subtract 35 here which is about half of its height I think so it'll move it downwards and go ahead and hit teleport. So now we're gonna make another custom event and this is going to be called handle squash. And this one only runs on the server and is reliable. This is what the ability is going to call, or the effect. I can't remember which at the moment. We'll get there. Now we're going to need a sequence. First, we want to turn off collision on our capsule so that we don't jump on a guy again or bump into it. So set collision enabled, no collision. And then once we're done with that, we just call squash sprite. So there we go, that is all the logic we need here. So this is our squash logic, and we'll color that pink. All right, two more things to make. We're gonna make another ability, so hopper gameplay ability, look for that. We'll call this GA squash. And then we also need a gameplay effect. And that's just our base one. So this is GE squash. Go ahead and open up both of these guys. When we first activate our ability, we want to get the actor info. We want to return this, let's break this, take the owning actor, we want to cast to hopper enemy. Yeah, we'll do that guy. And what we're gonna call is handle squash. So that We'll send a call over to the enemy to run all of this stuff. And now we're going to apply a gameplay effect to owner. The effect we're looking for is the gameplay effect squash. And then we need to do the important end ability afterwards. 
as well as if this cast fails, we need to go to that. And that's it. We don't need to do an ability input ID or anything else in here because this is not called with a key press or anything. Okay, we're in the gameplay effect squash, GE squash. We just need to come down to modifiers. Open that guy up. We're gonna be modifying the health. We're adding a scalable float of negative 100. I'm just doing a hard 100 here because I know that the bad guy has 100 health, so it's gonna drop it to zero. I don't fully understand yet how we can get the target's health and find its total health and do this dynamically. I'm gonna try and figure that out so then I can make a video later on that. Okay, back in the hopper enemy, we now need to call that ability. So I'm gonna move our little death logic over here. I'll put it above this guy because that's what it calls. And I'll move the begin play up. Okay, so here's our on component hit. And we're already launching our player character if we jump on it. So after this branch, we're gonna do another sequence it makes it clean so we're gonna go into this if true the first thing we do is launch the character all right so after we launch the character we grab our ability system component and we're going to try activate ability by class run that into there and the ability to activate this is going to be looking in our gameplay abilities over here so we need to add the squash and this isn't something that we apply or we call with a key press, that's our squash that we just made. And so we just need to grab squash. So it's looking at this class, and then it's comparing that class to our gameplay abilities in that array. And if it finds it, it will activate it. Once it's activated, it calls activate ability, gets the actor info, this is going to be hopper enemy, the owning actor, that's our hopper enemy, we're able to cast it because we know it's a hopper enemy. And then from there, we call handle squash. And this is called on the server because gameplay ability system works on the server. So we know this is going to work replicated and networking. And that's why we made that event execute on server. And that's also why we made squash sprite execute multicast. So after the server, disables the collision, the server then calls the multicast multi event. And if you remember, multicast has to be called by the server in order to run on all connected clients and the server. So Squash Sprite will execute for everybody, so we'll see this happen on everybody's screen. It then applies the gameplay effect, the squash, to the owner, to the hopper enemy that called all of this, so we will see that damage taken personally, that 100, and then end of the ability. And so if we play this, and we come on in here, and we jump on a bad guy, boom, and he bursts. And we have our cool little change of color, and our little effect when we squash him. Poof. All right, and we're gonna do this network again, just to show that off. So we are two clients here, and if I go ahead and boop, on both screens you see that the squash, the color change, and the little dust. I gotta find, find one of these guys that's visible by the other client. Doink. Poof. There you go. So there you have it. Squash logic using the gameplay ability system and all replicated over network. Um, I'm gonna try and think of what to do next. I have a couple of ideas. I might actually dive a little bit deeper into the code and do some more, uh, I don't know, code exploration so that we can better understand what's happening under the hood. Because uh, we've kind of glossed over using some things, but we haven't, we haven't really understood what's going on. At least I haven't, I'd like to learn that. Um, and I might be playing Halo Infinite a little bit because for, there's a rumor it's dropping today. So, until next time, bye.